How are you guys doing today? It's really good to be here with you guys, and um, we feel uh, really honored to have this opportunity uh, today. So, uh, to begin, we are Mike and Megan Gilger. We are a married couple and business partners living here in downtown Raleigh, and we love this community, and we feel so excited to be able to share with you guys today. We have a hashtag, hashtag to go far, has to do with our conversation today. So if you guys have any other questions, some of you, if you're an introvert like me, you may not want to raise your hand later and ask a question. Tweet it at us, let us know. We'll answer it this today or this weekend sometime. We'll get back to you. So I just want you guys to know that you can talk to me if you're an introvert like me. So. And that's just kind of, there's a lot of, <laughs> lot of hashtags, a lot of things that I mentioned this morning, but this is specifically like if you guys have any follow-up questions or things yeah. like that. Like I know there's a lot of weirdness of husband and wife working together, running blogs, studio. There's a ton of questions that go with that. So if you guys have anything after, um, we'll try and get whatever we can, but hit us up and we'll, we'll try and follow up. This afternoon, we're probably gonna be asleep or having a beer or something. I don't, I don't know if we'll get to it, but <laughs> over the weekend and into next week, we'd love to kind of chat back and it really means a lot to talk with any of you guys, so. Yeah. Some of you may follow us, some of you may not, some of you may know us personally, some of you may have shown up today and have no clue what the hell we do. So, which is totally cool because we're gonna, gonna explain it because it's weird either way, no matter what level you know us. Um, so we run a lifestyle blog called The Fresh Exchange. We began it in 2009 as designers and creatives looking for a place to just create freely and openly. And <clears throat> today it's still that same thing. It still acts that same way. And um, it's been this force behind us continuing our refinement and our skills as brand builders, content creators, and learning what it means to grow a social following. And within the Fresh Exchange, we share lifestyle-based content on living a simple, uncluttered, and natural life full of intentional beauty. And our goal is to offer hope and simplicity in a world of clutter and the unnecessary. We use this space to create the way we love to create, and that's really about all it is. It's our creative playground. And this ultimately led us into developing what is called Wild Measure, which is our brand building and content creation studio, where we have the opportunity to work with cli deserving clients that are striving to make change in the world and within the community that they're in. And we truly love what we do, and uh, we're very passionate about it, and we love the journey that has taken us thus far and that has brought us together. So that's kind of where we want to start today, so you guys can have groundwork to know where we're coming from. All right, so this morning we had you guys do something that you do every time when you come to Creative Mornings, but a little different today. We asked you guys a really interesting question. We said, what is your biggest or greatest weakness, and how do you write it just under your name and put it on your chest for everyone to see? So it was really fun kind of walking around and seeing what you guys wrote. Um, some of them, I mean, mine's super deep, but some of you guys, it was chocolate or it was all these other different things. And that was really fun to see. Um, we did that for two reasons. One, because we work at a computer away from everything. And we're in front of all of the people we respect the most this morning. And we're a little nervous. So it's nice to know that you guys are feeling just as vulnerable as we are up here. <laughs> um, so it's, it's really good to know kind of that 45 minutes walking around seeing like, all right, all right, all right. This is good. This is good. <laughs> the second and real reason is we're talking about the subject of humility. And there's a lot of ways that you can talk about that. But we really believe that understanding humility is to really understand your weakness. Um, and we believe that that's something that um, has a lot to do with uh, your strength, but also understanding yourself and who you are. So I'm going to go ahead and put my name tag up here. Um, my greatest weakness, the same in front of you guys, is that I have difficulty creating without boundaries. Um, and this is something that can hold me back creatively, is the idea of looking at a blank page and saying, just go and create, is the scariest thing in the world for me. Um, I've got to start with something where I know at least the rules of what we're working in. If, if, if it's you know, give me four colors to work with, give me some direction to go for, then I can go. But without that, that's often caused me to not follow something or not create. And that's kind of the worst thing that can happen when you're a creative and um, is to feel like there's an area you can't create. And that's kind of a scary thing to admit in front of a bunch of creatives. <laughs> <laughs> and then for me, my greatest weakness is that I struggle with the details. Uh, I can come up with great ideas all day long. And, but honestly, like great ideas are really nothing without the execution and understanding the process of how to execute them. And so I've worked really hard to work on that as I you know, started my, the company on my own and built a blog really on my own to begin with before Mike came and joined me. And so it was something I kind of had to learn 
to overcome on my own, but it's still not something I'm great at. And I, and I struggle with every single day. And so I, I feel like that's a pretty vulnerable thing for me to say, because everybody's like, what, that's your, that's your weakness? And it really is, like I have to work really hard at it. So without a doubt, when you guys all got to the table this morning, that was something that you had to get really honest with. It wasn't something you could fake, or maybe you could, but it's something that when you really get down to it, it's like that, that the most difficult question on the job application or whatever it is where it's like, what is your weakness? And it's like, well, I don't know. You, but you, gotta get, you really gotta get serious with what it, what it is, and you gotta get honest with yourself. And that's a really difficult thing. Um, luckily, I mean, ours were a little bit deeper and it wasn't chocolate or anything, but we had a little bit of time to think it, about this. It is this. chocolate, really, I mean, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, creating without whiskey could be a little hard too, but, um, <laughs> but the idea um, behind all that is that it, it takes a long time to get there and it takes looking at it from an honest place and so um, that's kind of where we wanted to start and just really admit this is something that's difficult to get to. Um, but we thought we'd also kind of bring that back and lead you guys into a place of understanding how we got to where we are and a little bit of our backstory. Mike and I met in college as two design students uh, in our senior year. This is us, really cute, six years ago, little friends. Uh, we met in the studio that we did all our work in, and um, so Come I'm. On. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but what we found was we we were working on competitive projects all the time. We were competing. He was art director on one project. I was art director on another. And so, but what we we you know, found value in each other and fell in love with each other, obviously, and uh, got married. But we also valued a lot of other things in each other as creatives. And some of those things were uh, a dedication to our craft and the idea of excellence and the value of quality over quantity in our work. And so we both resonated with that within each other. And so we collaborated on a lot of projects in college. But, at, and so when we went to graduate, everybody was like, guys, like, you guys should like work together. Like, that just makes total sense. And we were like, yeah, you're probably right, but no, nah, not for us. We're not going to do that. And we were pretty uh, just brushing it off because we kind of wanted to pursue our own creative endeavors, I think. Yeah, and I think one of the things that was interesting was we, we met in a program where we both were at the end of that program. We had built up a lot of a pride in what we were doing and the direction we wanted to go. And I think like any creative, when you're leaving school, there's an element of pride of, okay, I just worked my entire life to get to this. I'm, I've got an idea of what I want to do. And I didn't do all this to go and you know, get married and then you know, we're doing something together. I want to go and make a name for myself. I want to know who I am as a creative. Um, and we both, speaking, we both had that. Um, and I think that was something that was really difficult to, under, to take into account when we were thinking about working together then, uh, is that wasn't something we could have done. We needed to go down the path of working the way that we were um, and to get to a place where we would understand really what we, what we wanted from that. And so we did and we went for it and we went our different ways and we still married and kept that creative life and we had different things we collaborated on the blog with but really we were working in two different places. And so we went for the clients, we went for the titles, we went for the things that you know, coming out of school you're like this will satisfy me, this will be the thing that I'm looking for. Um, and I think the entire time it felt good but it didn't feel great. And it was something like you're operating in a way where you're like, all right, well maybe I'm just young. Maybe there's just something like, I just haven't gotten that project yet. Like, I haven't gotten that position. I'm not in that city yet. I'm not in the, you're just kind of waiting for it to come. It's, you're not unhappy, but you're just waiting. And so I think that was the thing that, we were on the left side of the bridge. It's sort of where we are um, was this place that we were just kind of longing and waiting for something. Um, and then, so down that path, working separate for about four years, and then, three years? Yeah. Three years. <laughs> then we, uh, we had a really cool offer that we just couldn't say no to. So in the fall of 2012, we were asked to, for the first time, to work together since college. So it had been three years. Like, like three years. <laughs> 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 then we, uh, we had not worked together at all. Um, it, the extent of us working together was kind of like Mike would take some photos for the blog. But that was about it. And it wasn't a collaborative atmosphere whatsoever between us. Uh, our marriage was good, but I mean, like, we weren't creating together. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but we were asked to go to Paris and work on a job for four weeks. Um, we were, so basically, we took off of what we were doing. We set everything aside <coughs> and went with some friends to go work on this video shoot in Paris for these four weeks. And uh, 
it was kind of interesting to disappear into a country and not have cell service at that time and uh, just kind of remove ourselves from everything, the clutter of life and where it was. And, you know, I had never been to Europe. I'd never been to Paris. I'd never done any of that. And so I'm just wide-eyed and just totally inspired by what I see in all over, you know, the light coming down the alleys, the, you know, I wasn't really interested in the Eiffel Tower, to be honest, but then, uh, but just like the beauty of what it is to be in a city where everybody understands art and culture in that way is just it's extremely inspiring. It's like, oh, this city gets it, like for the first time to be somewhere like that. Um, but we, while we were there, we, on our days off, we would, you know, wander the city with our friends. We had a group of like five other creative friends that were all there at the same time. And we were all kind of broke, kind of like trying to figure ourselves out creatively. And we kind of lived this bohemian life, like not anything glamorous. Like we lived on bread and cheese. Like it was really cool. And, uh, <laughs> and at night we would like come back from our wandering around the city and I would, you know, write out like, you know, journal everything that we had done that day if it was a day off and like then I'd like gather all my inspiration that I'd saw during the day and like create my own type. And Mike would edit photos and we created 16 days of type in Paris. This was our first collaborative project that we really produced and put out there. And so the reason we wanted to share this was because it was the first moment where we really saw what we could do together and it was really eye-opening because I was I was able to accept that like Mike liked these photos I saw this type and like we just kind of worked in this really synergetic way for the first time in our in our creative careers together and so it was a really amazing thing to just kind of come back after a day wandering the city and just like release it all in this way so even though we were there for four weeks we created these 16 days because uh, these were our days off not working so so it was, it was kind of a cool thing that I don't think either of us were ready for when we went into it, is it, it was, of course, you know, yeah, you're not going to say no to a trip to Paris and doing that, but I think we were really thinking about the travel and the things we were going to do and not really what we needed as creatives. Um, and I think there were a lot of things that, like, it was after we would come back and uh, all of our friends would be together and we'd start talking about creative things and start to talk about what we really wanted to do, not what we were expected to do. And we were starting to see these things come alive in us and we're like, whoa, this is this is feeling right. Like all that stuff that I was pursuing, I don't know that that ever felt right. And so we'd, we'd come together and collaborate. And then as we were posting this stuff, so we were in Paris and we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have a lot of that. So we were a little more disconnected than we are when we're here. And so after a while, we didn't even notice that like, we, we, Megan had done about six days and her friend was like, wait, this is, this is kind of cool. Like you guys have got something going on. And we weren't able to do it every day. So we're like, I don't know if it's gonna be you know, something. We're like, no, just go for it, see how it goes. And so it ended up being 16 days total. And we did all 16 days and then put it all into one post and pushed it out. Pinned the images and just sort of left and forgot. We, we had two more weeks to go um, and went to Italy after that and met up with some photographer friends and, and did that. But while we were there, we were starting to realize and sort of think about our time of what happened. And we were realizing, like, okay, for the first time, this is feeling right. And we were starting to check out our emails again and look at some stuff. and whoa, for the first time, like, our friends that were, were back were, were commenting, it was different response to our work than we had gotten before. Like, you know, the, the typical creative response of, like, you're critiquing the details of, I like that type, I like that color, you're breaking down the composition. We were getting things where people were saying, like, I really connect with what's going on. Like, I love the feeling of this. And it was, it was these emotional reactions. And we were like, whoa, that's different. That feels really cool. That felt really easy. This can't be real. Like, this can't be, like, that kind of balance where you're like, whoa, this should be more difficult than it is. And so we were just sort of dreaming about it. We were thinking about it, and we're like, okay, that felt right. People think it's cool. We've got about three months of savings. Let's see what we can do if we just sort of jump out and take a wild measure. And that was kind of the same thing that we just decided to call our branding studio. And so we stepped out and decided this is, this is what we're going to go for. And we're going to see if we can create the same way we created here with brand projects and see how it goes and we'll just operate that way and we'll work from a place of emotion and we'll connect to people and to things and get our inspiration offline and, and find things in the world that inspire us. And so we're like, okay, let's go for it. So we, we got back and started working from this way and all of a sudden things are starting to connect really well. Things feel really natural. And we got an email from Pinterest um, a couple weeks later, after we were doing different things and different blog posts, and they said, hey, we think you guys are doing some really cool stuff. We would like to show one of your images on our About page 
as the example of lifestyle inspiration. And we're like, wow, okay, so Pinterest thinks we're doing good stuff too. This is, we're in the right direction. This is a really cool thing. It was a good affirmation. It was, yeah, it was, it was really good affirmation. Which is really, it, it was really good when you're scared as hell to step out in that way and to see that other people in this, something that you really valued, you know, in terms of that Ben created this and it's amazing and, and that they saw this as something that was a good example of what good lifestyle content was. Basically, what we found in all this was that truly, when we were able to say we cannot do this alone anymore we need to go to the next level so let's you know be humble and let's do this like I, there are places where mike can fill holes for me that i can do for him in terms of our weaknesses and our strengths and and that was like a very humbling moment to be able to recognize that i couldn't do it alone he couldn't do it alone and in fact we did it better together and so that was like that secret thing that we needed in order to you know, create work that we just could never have ima imagined. I could never have imagined that I would have created that and then continued this career as it is right now and where it will continue to go without, you know, that moment that we had where we realized that we needed each other. And I think one of the things that we had to recognize first was that to get to that place, we have to all accept the fact that, like, as creatives, by nature, we're individuals. And that's something that is sort of ingrained in all of us is that the way you work and the way you're raised and educated and it's, it's, you're an architect or you're a painter or you're these things, you get these titles and these feelings that this is who I am out of my strengths. But what you forget in a lot of that is, is what is the weakness on the other side? So that all sounds really cool and you're like, okay, Megan, Mike, how do I do this? Like, how do I make that happen? And the truth is, is you have to let go. You have to let go of control. You have to let go of pride. You have to let go of all those things you're scared of, um, that it's not going to be a certain way, or maybe it is, and that's really scary. Um, you have to let all that go. And obviously, that's a lot easier said than done, because <coughs> I, I can tell you every day that I struggle with letting go myself. And maybe that should have really been my greatest weakness, is I struggle with letting go of control, especially working on my own for three years prior to Mike coming into my company. Like, because it, it was my company at that time and then it became ours and it, it was a lot of letting go of control and saying okay I can I do need you and I'm better with you and that was really hard and so I I think it's a daily struggle that as creatives we have to choose to make because it's a lot easier to say I can go it alone but your work is only going to be half as good as if you say that I'm weak here I need help somewhere and that's an opportunity to take an investor to um, take a partner to take a mentor to find a counselor a business counselor a financial planner whatever it may be in your situation like there's a varying wide range of what that means for you and so being able to say like I want that in my life and I'm okay with like being weak and acknowledging my weakness because that isn't really a failure this is an opportunity to grow and so that was kind of the thing that we realized is working out of that there was that place when we were working alone um, and we were doing fine and we were we were in a direction but it wasn't this fulfilling thing of this is who I was meant to be as a creative and then acknowledging and being humble about the areas of our own weakness you're sort of a hundred percent now um, when you're working out of that and I think that's something that we really found even digging more and more into the subject of like what is my weakness, what is your weakness, what is our weakness and I think that's something that we're hoping that as you guys really wrote down what, what's on your name tag you think about that and, and really think okay as you leave and you look at the community even with this like where are the areas that I can find someone to help me with this, the thing that, that I need in that um, and so really Megan and I have found in, in the time that we've worked together um, again, we're giving you the, the good times, the, the high levels of, of how it's worked out great, but there's been a lot of sort of back and forth of understanding that. But really, when I say that my greatest weakness is, is not understanding how to begin a project without boundaries, I now have a framework to work in, is that having a blog where it's a daily beast of needing more and more content. We have clients now that have a structure of what they need to work in. And I've got more than I could ever have as far as structure to work within. So I'm thriving. I, I'm so happy doing what I do. And now, working together, Megan has framework for all of her ideas, is that there is now some accountability to the list upon list of, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, and I can finally say, like, okay, let's do this this month, next month, <laughs> or if we can't, let's find a team, let's do something, and now there's some accountability to say, okay, this is possible, this isn't, and we're both operating in the way that we fully can operate. Um, and that was something that we had to learn that it really is better to go together and we can go much farther if we do that. To kind of close up, I mean, Mike and I 
obviously the best thing is when we have the synergy between each other and you know that's really a, this idea is really applicable within a partnership but I think that there's an applicable way to apply this to our community here in Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill area, is that we have a really amazing creative community here, and that was part of what pulled us to mm -hmm. Raleigh, was that we saw some amazing energy, and I think that in order to create a healthy, collaborative, amazing, thriving, innovative community, there has to be a level of humility. And so I want you guys to all feel ownership over your weaknesses, because this is an opportunity where we can all help each other and build something that is really just going to everybody's gonna see Raleigh and Durham as this amazing place where that's where creatives thrive. That's where you can make your ideas happen. And that only happens by us recognizing that we can't do it alone and that we're not gonna go alone and we have to do it as a creative community. And that's a really beautiful, amazing opportunity that I really hope that walking away today, we can all feel energized to do that and not feel that by recognizing this weakness that for me, it's the details or that I struggle with control. You know, I can find somebody that can help me work through that and maybe there's weaknesses between Mike and I that we look for in other people and because we do and so I, I think that there's if we are willing to do that and be vulnerable with people in our creative community and feel safe in that then we can create something really innovative and amazing here. So throughout the, the entire time as we were putting this together thinking about humility and weakness we stumbled upon an African proverb that don't hate us on Twitter if we get the reference wrong or we've got it there's a thousand different ways people have said it but it kind of put it best. And it's <laughs> as best we can reference it, it sort of went this way. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Thanks, you guys. Really appreciate it. We'd love to answer questions. <laughs> there was a lot of reasons. Um, one, we had a lot of friends here, to be honest. Uh, we had a really good group of people that was already existing here, which makes it a really easy place to move to. Um, but then, like I said, the creative community that we saw here, uh, we came and did a dinner with some friends of ours and for the blog, uh, we did a simple evening and uh, we did it at Vidari and I, we met the guys at Arrowhead and we met Vidari, we met Shannon and Jake at Capital Club. We just saw these amazing people and we were just like, gosh, this is like where we need to be, especially moving from the woods of Northern Michigan. <laughs> it was much more exciting. <laughs> and the other thing is, is you guys have much more a more amazing weather. Yeah, the like, weather. I think it's like, that's it. It's like eight months of snow up there. Like, this is way cooler. So. Yeah, this is, this is <laughs> in, an, in the opposite, not a temperature way. Obviously. Yeah, I think, I think for us, it's, it, there's a long list. And I think it, it, as we've kind of found, there's a lot of people that end up here for different reasons. And I think looking at it, we were really striving for a healthy, creative community and something that like, I mean, perfect. I mean, this is it. Like what we were looking for as a community that comes together and says like, this is it, competition in a good way, but also collective in a good way. Like, we're, there's still kind of an underdog spirit that's going on here, yeah. that people are willing to work together and come to some great things. And Raleigh's still yet to be defined in many ways. Like, it, the whole triangle is yet to be defined. Like, this is just, it's beginning. Like, we haven't even, like, I feel like as a community, like, all of us in this room, like, we have so much opportunity. Like, this is so exciting. You guys should just be, like, dancing every morning. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, because it's really cool. Like, our city is not even close to being done. So, it's really exciting. Sorry, I'm, I get really energized about that. <laughs> yeah, Mark. I'm going to be really honest and vulnerable and tell you that we go to counseling. Um, I think that that's really healthy because if we aren't working well together, then um, our work isn't working well together. So I'm not going to lie that there's, that that happens and we go every week because that's, that's healthy and that's what we should do in order for our work to be best for our clients and the brands we work with. Um, but obviously like we have boundaries within our relationship to like, you know, we don't talk about work in our bedroom. You know, it's like there's a wall and we hit it and we know those walls, we communicate that to each other and we have to be very open with each other, like scary open about our feelings and everything. So Yeah, I mean I mean all, really like it's yeah. true or else it just that almost, doesn't that almost became the talk today was like do we focus on things like that? Because I think it's something that we want to talk about more because I think it's a, a conversation that we have the way we work together, but I think there's a lot of great creative couples and things that and, and we sort of categorize a creative couple as anyone that has an emotional connection outside of work and you start working together. Yeah. And I think one of the things that we found was that not every couple should work together. And you know, when we left school, we were sort of prideful assholes, like we shouldn't have worked together. And so we needed time apart to work our different directions to come together. And so I think understanding both the strengths and the weaknesses of where you step in and where you don't, um, I, we kind of know our lines. And it was like, even, I mean, even funny working on today, 
what we said now was a lot different than what we said at our dinner table at 6 a.m. this morning. Um, and so we just sort of picked up in different areas, but I think kind of knowing that balance of... Not in a of, bad way. Not in a, no, not in a bad way. Um, but I think, I think knowing those areas of, okay, I, she's got this, this is her area, this is my area, like sort of having some balance. And I think really the biggest thing that we, we see where there's, there's trouble in that is honest, equal respect on both sides. Like, and it's yeah. something that for some couples you just shouldn't work together. Like if you're doing something where one is way overbalanced over the other or something like that, that's, you may love each other and you may want the best for that, but that's gonna add conflict in business. Um, and there really is a difference of, of when you're working together and when you have um, personal life. Yeah, we, so we've done a lot of different stuff and different things. I think I come from a more interactive background. Megan comes from a more print and, um, and design product type stuff on that side. So we blend a lot of different things, but I think where we're at right now and where we're going, um, I mean, one of the things that we, we said kind of early on was that one of our big deals is that we have a unique opportunity, and I, we all do as creatives, is that you get to choose what the conversation is. And we have a, a lot of people that want to work with us. Because of the exposure of the blog, there's, we're just visible more often. And so we have a lot of people that want to work with us. But the great thing is we get to pick the best ideas and, and really help bring that up to the top. And that's something that, you know, at, at the top level, a lot of agencies that are working on, an, on a budget, you have to go where the money is. And most of the time, those are not the best sort of, they don't have the best initiative behind them. There's a lot of money or other things that go. And so, and, but you have to do it, it's business. And so um, I think we always try and work with deserving clients, so people that have a great idea, something that's, that is needed in this world. Um, and really that kind of relates to the blog of working out of a, a simple, honest place is that we just, we want these things in the world. Um, and then another thing we're, we're trying to work on a little bit more is this idea of content creation. Um, is this thing of, we've been doing brand building for so long, it's this idea of like, launching a brand off the, off the ground, but one of the things we're finding is that that happens at a certain point is you've launched the business, but what happens after that? And what's the visual experience of a brand? You know, like from beyond just the logo, beyond just the website, it's like, how do you feel when you see an image about this brand? How do you, like, how does that all communicate clearly? And that's something, because of the blog, like we've really dug into and working with you know large uh, companies as well and having that opportunity with them. So we're kind of doing a lot more of that than brand clients right now. Um, and so that's, we're that's really a lot of the bigger names that we're working with. But even on those, like we still get to say f you to some big guys, and that's really nice sometimes <laughs> to be able to say, you know what, your food is not organic, so no, we're not going to work with you, yeah. or some of those things. And you know, we work out of our house and our studio, so we get to. We don't have to make as much. We don't have. We get to be a little more flexible, and that's some stuff that, you know. It's I'm, good and bad. I mean, yeah. There's like pluses and minuses to yeah. it. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that answered you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Actually, I was gonna ask if you did content. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, and a lot of it, like we really. So our our undergrad was um, a lot in uh, visual storytelling and video and work like that, and so we kind of bring that in of of working from the standpoint of telling a story when you're talking about content. Um, and so one of the things, like uh, just really specific, like our travel posts and things, we'll always try and categorize different things of, of getting a well-rounded view of a city. And so even photography-wise, we'll do some close shots, some middle shots, and full city shots. So you're kind of getting foreground, middle ground, background, like all the content of like what a landscape would be or um, the elements of a story. So kind of bringing that into everything you do and keeping content well-rounded um, is something we strive for. It doesn't always work. And, I think there's always this longing feeling of like, ah, oh, I didn't tell that part of it. But, you know, hopefully it, it comes across well. I, I, think, I think a lot of times it's something that happens a little bit more organic um, and that you, you know, kind of w when you're looking to hire, you're doing something, you can put a description of what you're looking for, but a lot of times you have to meet it to know it. Um, and I think that's a lot of times we found our best connections and honestly our best clients um, from just doing dinners or meeting we love chefs. We love a lot of like creatives that are outside of the things that we do. Um, and so we're always trying to connect in weird places because we just go for different obsessions. And then those people sort of talk about you in different atmospheres. And I, I think these connecting type people that know you outside of your own industry, they tend to, to make a much more concise description of who you are. Um, and they'll do that for other people too. And they'll say, hey, I've got a friend that does this, this. Maybe you guys connect. And that's where we tend to find like our best connections is someone that knows us um, not on a professional stance of like, you guys specifically work in this medium. They know us as, you guys care about this. Um, and then when you're connecting on sort of why you work on what you do, you tend to have a better connection. Um, but you know pretty quick like the areas where you're falling short. And, and you'll kind of see that pretty quick like, all right, yes, 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 they do that. 
but do I vibe with them? Like, do they under, are they working for the same reason that I'm working? Well, and sometimes it can take like, I mean, honestly, you should give yourself a little bit of a buffer, like to kind of just say, hey, in the next six months, let's give this a try. But if it doesn't work, this isn't gonna ruin our relationship, no hard feelings. It's kind of like, not a prenup, but something like that. You know, it's kind of like, I, if, if, you, if we decide either side of us like, is feeling like this isn't gonna work, and then it's safe to say in that moment, like, okay, I'm not feeling this, and you, there's no hard feelings, you know? And that's, that's, I think, really important to have if you think that you find that person, is to like, give yourself that, because you don't wanna ruin a relationship. Because most likely that person, you've connected them with them in a really good way, you know, for, some, for whatever reason. And, and you wanna maintain that even if it doesn't work as a partnership too. So I think that's really important to think about. Well, I mean, for me, it's, so, I'm a little bit weird. Um, <laughs> I, I have like, well, I find inspiration a lot like from traveling. I mean, that's number one. Uh, but right now, like we're not doing a lot of traveling. And I think what I'm doing a lot more lately is, you know, just focusing on every day, purposely finding beauty even within the clutter of life and I think there's a lot of inspiration within that and I mean that's where the blog is every day and so that's like you know that's like this like Mike said it's a constant monster for me like to feed and I love that because it means it's a daily challenge to push myself in that way and so I think having that opportunity every day to do that is probably the thing that pushes my creativity and always is having me come up with ideas is because of this rhythm that I'm always on. And, um, but I also, in, when we get down to like branding projects or like content creation stuff, I'm like really looking for specific things. Like for instance, like with Raleigh Raw, like when we were working with them, I, I was like, I'm gonna go grab all the veggies that are in all their products and I'm just gonna like cut them up, slice them up, I'm gonna explore the colors, like, you know, dig into something that's more tangible piece of what you're working on instead of just being like okay what are the trends right now on Pinterest what is like being what's hip you know um, that's all well and good and you'll get there but I think when you really create great work is by listening to a story really well of like where a brand or a client is coming from and listening to that deep passion and underlying story that's there and then applying these tangible aspects to it so um, I, and I think that was really applied with Raleigh Raw, and um, we created a really good relationship with them in the process, which was really neat too. So, I I feel like that's probably yeah I I, yeah I kind of feel like because I've I've connected a lot of that too. too yeah, like, I think a, one of the biggest things that I'll fall into a trap like I think a lot of people were like if I stay on Tumblr or Pinterest or something like where I'm just looking at what other people have done. I'm going to just make a worse version of that because they've made the best version. That's why I'm looking at it. And so I think one of the things that we realized really quick was like, you can make that, and people that aren't even designers know it really quick. They're like, yeah, it's okay. They're like, it's not bad, it's not great. Like, it's, it's gonna fit on the shelf. But I think when you get out and you go and you travel and you kind of do the things that kind of happen pre-internet, um, and really, and, and it was kind of the, me realizing on accident, like when we were in Paris, a lot of those things were removed. Like I just didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have the ability to do a lot of that wandering online, and I had to do it in life. And so just literally sitting and sketching for three hours, like I, still, I, I need to do that this afternoon. I haven't done that in so long. Like That even itself is such a good thing to kind of get away and do things that um, just kind of slow down. And you can draw really ugly stick figures, like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think a lot of it, like it really is just kind of breaking your norm. Um, and even in little ways, you can do that. Um, and travel tends to be the best way for us, but there's even, you know, this travel again. Travel doesn't always mean like booking a flight to Paris. Like that means like going to Umstead, going to, you know, uh, wherever, I don't care. Like just getting away from what is normal. Like, like break the everyday and, and leave your cell phone behind. And that's I think something that, you know, we were talking about Raleigh in this area is like, that was one of the things that we were like, okay, this is great. We have the opportunity, like I could go surf in the morning and be back for a meeting at lunch or the, things like that can happen where you just do a half day, a, a micro adventure, and do something where you're seeing something different. Um, I forgot the name of the book, there, uh, about doing even an artist date for yourself, where you go and you spend time with yourself at an art museum, or something that fulfills you creatively, and kind of fills that back up to that place where you, you feel like your most honest creative self. And saying, just being able to say no to more things, I think, too, just because 
I, I feel like if when we get in this rhythm of work and we're constant doing, constantly doing this cycle and we're like this hamster on a wheel, we forget to like look outside and like see what's actually happening in the world around us and in the relationships and with our clients and all of that. And there's so much inspiration just looking outside of that. So, yeah. yeah so this was something that we started about a year and a half ago. Um, we work with a couple different agencies uh, that are based across the country. And, and we do some of it on our own too. We negotiate some of those things on our own. But basically, we, I just use my gut. Like, is this something that I really love? Would it be something that I would purchase? Would it be something that I would actually integrate into my life? Or do I already integrate into my life? That's my first filter. And if it aligns in that, then it makes it to the next filter, which is like, what is the ask from them in terms of the content I'm going to be creating? And um, if it's something that's going to be natural, like we say no to banner ads. And all the, the, the most ad is like, what you're going to see is that logo at the base. Like I say no to a lot of that every single day because it's, it's just, I don't want to lose my, like I never started the blog to make money and sponsorship, but unfortunately the thing with a growing blog is it costs a lot of money to maintain. And so you got, you know, servers and all this other stuff and a developer that you have to pay and, you know, there's a lot of maintenance to owning a blog. And so I, we have to take sponsorships in some ways, but now it's become something that's actually part of our livelihood because uh, we have certain, like my agent that I work with, they, they know like what else I know to and what I won't. I'm like very specifically categorized in what I will do and what I won't. And um, I think it's really an amazing opportunity for brands to be able to work with bloggers because of like our, I, f I feel like our readers really engage with our content that we do create with these brands because we're so specific about what we do choose. And I keep to about, I don't do more than four sponsored pieces a, a month. Just like I keep to that and it's like whatever we do in a month, it's max four. If it doesn't get to four, if we have no sponsors that month, it's okay. Like it's because I would rather say no to everything if it doesn't align than saying yes to a lot of it. So and losing my readership and the faith that they have in me because that to me is more valuable because that's the kind of space that I would want to read. So. Well, and one of the things, and I was kind of big, she did not want to do anything. She also didn't want to make any money. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, we would like to have a house. That would be great one day. And so one of the things we realized in kind of coming from the agency world is that no matter what you do when you're working, your time is sponsored by something when you're working in design or advertising. And so I think one of the things we realized is that this is a reality of this, is that. And what's the lesser of all the evils, well, I guess? Kind of working some... into that. And that there's only so much time throughout the week and the things you have to do. And if you're taking time away from creative projects to do this creative inspiration, you have to sort of balance out the monthly budget on that. And so a lot of times that comes into different ways, but I mean, really, it's... Most of the brands like really trust us. Like they literally email us and they're like, here's, the, here's our ask, you create content, put our names on the bottom, whatever you guys want to do that's around this theme. Sometimes you have to have the product, sometimes you don't. And that's about all I really say. Like, is sometimes I'll be like, I don't want to hold your product, so but you can sponsor this as a lifestyle post, or you know, and they're really okay with it, like because they trust us, and I think we've had this rapport of like how we create content and that it does engage with our readers, so they know that and trust us to create what they want. And the, and uh, the last part I'll say with that is that like um, I think is that there's this cool thing that we're starting to see with other people is that you you have a really honest response of what happens when you know if we were to work with some child labor something coming that's like something terrible and people are like what the hell what did that where did that come from i think it's something you see a response really quick of what people do and don't love and i think a lot of the stuff that we choose to work with it is stuff that we would do or we wouldn't do or it, it is things we would do um and so it's stuff that it's just great to be able to have a little bit of budget to work with to have some freedom to rent a drone camera or to do some crazy shit that we want to do uh, we've now got some freedom to do it and so yeah. that yeah it's a tough question and i think it's something that you know we're hoping that everyone is, is kind of going with this motion as, as blogging because you do have some power um, in telling the market what's good and bad, and that's kind of a rare you thing. Cho that you choose how you want to use that power, and for us it's about choosing things that we believe in and that we believe can make the world better. So, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. Yes. Thank you.